Hey folks, it's been a while since we've done a brush hour, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, this show was scheduled for a little while back, um, but had to be rescheduled, so it can be very time consuming. And that's fine. It's okay if things take a, a little bit of time to paint and draw because uh, sometimes it's worth it. There are other things. So today we're going to look at hair, that will be the subject, and we're going to look at some brush options for painting different kinds of hair, different textures of hair, etc. It's a head that I've drawn. This is going to be our little mannequin for today's show, and we're going to use this for our demonstration. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through different brush sets and show you some of the many ways that you can play around with this. Now I want to point out that we're going to be working with a bunch of different stylistic approaches. In some cases, we'll be looking for sort of a more realistic, uh, more natural kind of approach for drawing the hair. But in other cases, we're, just, we're going to look at just how to experiment and play. Because you don't necessarily, with this being illustration, have to always be going for realism. In fact, a lot of the times, uh, that's kind of no fun at all. So we're going to have more fun with this. Gus! Gus, you're back. Uh, Bliss is here. Leia, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, hey gang, I know we're uh, having some issues with, with buffering. Uh, this is coming from uh, my end and we have yet to figure this out. I called the cable service folks and they assured me I needed to sort that out. But we're going to try and get through it and if it doesn't work out, um, we will we'll try again with this episode at a later date. All right. Hey, Clever, thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. All right, why don't we start in with some brushes? So the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the symmetry here. If you haven't used symmetry in Photoshop, it's right over here if you're using a brush tool of any kind. It's a little butterfly face without having to draw both sides. I just draw one side and everything gets mirrored on the other side. Isn't that lovely? All right, we'll turn that off. There we go. And I'm going to create a new layer, and then we're going to pop on over to our brushes. Now with every episode of Brush Hour, I like to remind folks that the way you're able to acquire over 2,000 brushes with your uh, Photoshop or Fresco or any other Creative Cloud subscription is to come on over to... That is going to launch your browser and it's going to allow you to sign in with your Adobe credentials and then you're going to see a brushes page where you can download many, many, many brush sets not just the brush sets that have the standard packs that you would expect um, from the Kyle brush uh, era, like the Mega Pack and the watercolors and the manga brushes, all those are there. But also, uh, brush update will be at the very top of that download page. So always look for those updates. Follow me on Twitter if you want to see when uh, those updates are announced. Like I said, they're pretty much every season. They're quarterly, uh, and, and then you can add those. It's something people like to paint and draw. I'm going to open up the Mega Pack and we're going to come on down to the paint box. And here inside the paint box, if you just scroll down a little ways, you're going to find a bunch of brushes called bristle. Okay, bristle uh, one, nice long flowing kind of hair. All right, so why don't we just select uh, one of them? We're going to try this um, bristle supreme right here. Okay. And I'm going to change the color up a little bit. We're going to go for a nice blue. And off to the side, I'll just show you what this looks like when I paint with it. Look at that. See? Now what's nice is you're able to control, okay, the way the hair, if you will, or the bristles, sort of pull apart or, be or become a little bit more sparse in the marks that you make, which is great. So I'm able to control that right there with my hand simply by using more or less pressure, okay? And now remember, you can size a brush up or down using the um, bracket keys on your keyboard, all right? And the bracket keys look like this, okay? You'll find them off to the right of the letter P if you're on a North American keyboard. Alrighty. So sizing my brush up and down, what I can do is I can just use a big brush, right? Just click a couple of times to size my brush up with my bracket key. And I can then just start painting in some hair. 
like this, okay? And there we go. Come in behind there. And I'm going to select just a part of this head silhouette here. And I'm going to put a little background color in there of and behind the face like this. All right, now I've got a really big brush here, but if I, I size that brush down a little bit, what I can do now is I can do things like this. I can just kind of, uh, whoops, come off the side for some smaller little bits like that. See, what you want to do is break that surface up just a little because remember, hair has a soft texture, right? So the edges that you paint with hair, unless you're doing sort of like a manga style or more uh, comic book style, um, the edges that you want to paint, and I'm using light pressure, slightly smaller brush, and I get this uh, shape in here that I like. Okay, there we go. And once I have that shape, I can lock the layer transparency, come over here at this top layer and lock the layer transparency. And with this same brush, I can simply add the darks and the lights, right? So one of the keys to thinking about hair, and this is not going to be a big art lesson here, but because um, I do want to feel kind of a light source at the top, whether it's a, an overhead light or you're outside and it's sunlight, things like that. Um, but if there's a light source, what areas is it going to kind of hit on the head, okay? So wherever the hair kind of moves out from the head here, here, okay, maybe here, you want to think about those areas being lit. Um, and then you can also think about shadows. So if this is our mid-tone kind of area, it can go a little bit cooler and a little bit darker. And if I want to, I can just start to throw some little colors right here. Right, and then I'll be able to pop back out zigzaggy kind of patterns, right? Like this. And then all this stuff down here is gonna be darker. And I'll come back to the back there and just, oops, make sure I lock my layer transparency there as well. And just make that a little darker, okay? And there you go. Now with light pressure, of course, I can also make that transition really, really subtle if I want, okay? And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of using like a scrubbing kind of action. We've done all of this with this one bristle brush, right? It's very, very handy. And then for the highlights, you know, first I can come back in with this lighter blue color just by sampling it with the eyedropper, softening some, all right? See how that makes a difference right there? Following to these, these rhythms, right? Of the sort of undulations, I suppose is a good word for what's happening there, these sort of wavy patterns in the hair, okay? To make that look a lot more natural. And then we grab this original color, we go for a sort of a highlight color, and we can hit the top of the head here for the highlight. Right? Hopefully you're getting the idea. You're seeing how this can be done. And the brush is taking a lot of the heavy lifting and taking care of it for you, right? Because it's got that very distinct bristle pattern to it and gives you that control with the pressure to be able to quickly paint in these um, masses of hair. Gets you in a whole lot of trouble time-wise 
can also be um, something where if you're not careful, it could look kind of like you're painting spaghetti or little pieces of thread. Doesn't look like the hair has much body to it. All right, so you're seeing how this is working, right? All right, turn off your layer transparency lock right there. And now you can do things like, if you just scroll up a little higher here in the Mega Pack, you're gonna find things like these smudge tools, bristle smudge, bristle smudge new, etc. If I grab that bristle smudge new, for example, look what you can do. You can pull different areas into each other and out of each other and really start to nice curvy wavy passages like this. I see this as sort of like a a finishing kind of touch, okay? And I think it really goes a long way to um, to finishing things out. See that? Just a few passes just a few passes with this. All right, so how long did that take us? Maybe like six or seven minutes? Not bad, right? Um, it's your birthday, says Alessandra. Hey, happy birthday, Alessandra. Happy birthday to you. Glad to hear it. All right. Um, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going here. Now, uh, once I've done this, what I can do is I could just Command J, which duplicates that layer. I have an action here. Um, I have a whole bunch of actions, as you can see. I'm gonna use my button mode here. And I can flip things horizontally, flip things vertically, right? Go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal, right there. I set myself up an action because I do that all the time and that just makes things a lot faster. I could do that with this little skin area down here, this color, just flip it horizontally, slide it on over this way. Same here. Take this, this hair in the background, just pull that in there behind. So there you go. Okay, I hope that was um, a good start there to just give you an idea of how to take a bristle brush uh, from the Mega Pack and then to use smudging after you've painted in these shapes to get yourself going, okay? Start it out with this. Now, let me show you some other things you can do at, at this point, okay? Now, what I've done is, it's nice, you know, you see what looks like Command-E or Control-E on a PC, and I'm using the same brush, but now what I can do is, you know, start to make it so it's a little less symmetrical. Just come around and start to play with the styling of the hair here, right? That's what we want to do here. So we're going to add some asymmetry. We're going to throw those same colors in as before. Start to think about separate locks, separate areas of the hair overlapping one another, moving in front of, right, and moving behind, etc. So that you get this more natural arrangement of, if I showed you a moment ago, you have your friend, the smudge tool, okay, you can come back to that and you can start to like, just get a bit more sort of fluid with that. See how that works? So we've just taken something that was perfectly symmetrical and we've made it a bit more interesting for the viewer, right? You can do stuff like this. You can pull stuff in front of and behind and so on. All right, take this and like pull it down that way. Lots of cool stuff you can do. Um, that smudge tool, by the way, and again, remember that's the bristle smudge new that's in the Mega Pack. That smudge tool um, responds to pen pressure as well, which means you're able to, with the pressure of the pen, you're able to pull more 
or less. So you can make that smudge uh, effect more or less um, intense, if you will, okay? And uh, yeah, now you can get carried away, of course, but hey, you know, everything's flexible, everything is undoable, etc., etc. This is why we love painting digitally. It's so fun. So fun to have all this control. You are in control of the result, right? The final result is yours to make happen. See that? All right, so that kind of covers that one uh, base for us. It's from the concept brush set, which I believe I have right here. In the concept brushes, okay, there are some smoke brushes. Um, there are also these flame brushes. The flame brushes do a good job of this as well. Let me just come on down to the smoke brushes first. And what I want to show you um, are the mystical smoke brushes. Great for this too. But let me just come on down. Here we go. Smoke builder, uh, smoke builder detailer. So this smoke detailer right here. If you grab a color and just do this kind of thing. You can do these really nice little sort of individual bits of hair. Like these little individual strands. Like this and do some pretty cool stuff with these. So try that out as another, another means of um, adding some little last bits, some little strands here and there, okay? The smoke brushes. Um, there are a bunch of them in here. There's the smoke builder uh, basic. Okay, you can size that down and do little itty bitty strands, smoke swirl, soft smoke stream, all of these, okay? Give them a try, they're all different. They all have a different sort of a look. Some are um, going to have less opacity, and you can sort of take your time and build up to the effect that you want. Then come back in with your smudge tool and pull some of those together, etc., etc., etc. So you can see how that works, right? Lots of fun. All right, so we'll hide this for now, and we're going to move on. Short hair here for a second. Um, so we'll come back over to that mega pack. Here we go. And we're gonna grab this big wet wash bleed brush, okay? And I want you to see what that looks like. It just adds a nice soft sort of uh, buildup of tone with a little bit of texture, all right? Now the reason I wanna use this is I'm going to select this area here in the background, make that sort of my selection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this brush just to sort of tone uh, this area here. We'll go ahead and change the color. All right, now watch. As I, as I do this, I can control the area I'm painting. And as I take my time and allow pigment to build up. What's nice about this is I get a very soft border between the the skin of the person and the, uh, the hair piece that you affix to the scalp, right? Um, these hairs that are growing, if you look at the pattern of the individual hairs growing out of the head, uh, they are uneven and there's a softness to that transition from the hair growing up and out and then the thickness of the hair um, as you get more and more of it moving away from the scalp for the hair, right? And then try and fill it in. This makes it look like plastic. That's not natural. Um, Cody says the spaghetti hair habit is so hard to break. I agree. I agree. Uh, but this helps. And um, this will set me up now. What I can do is I can build on that base Okay, so I just go a little darker. And now, using that same brush, 
okay, I can get right up close to that edge, but just go a little darker and allow for some of that lighter edge to stay right where it was. Like so. my base, and we're gonna close that off. That was in the watercolor set, folks. I forgot to mention that, my apologies. Uh, we're coming back to the Mega Pack here, um, 2019. Now with this brush, let me just deselect for a moment. I want you to show you what you can do. See that? A touch darker and come back to that selection, that area, right? You get a little bit of that base color, okay? And then what you do as you get into the, the body of the hair, and then you add this texture with that blockhead brush and you get a really nice effect from that I'm using here, just for the moment. so that we can nice zoom in, okay, distant, right? And if you wanna come along around the edge here, you can put a little, if you wish, just to get that edge on top of it. And then what I do is I take that layer and you have to learn a brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm erasing with exactly the same brush to give me a less clean air, okay? Holding down the tilde key. Kyle, what's the tilde key? People are saying. Tilde key is that little squiggly bop in the very, don't fret because I have a solution for you, and that is to come up here for your brush mode, and mode for your brush will take the brush and temporarily turn it into an eraser, okay? Alrighty, let's see if this fixes things. I'm, I'm resetting the stream, but I, I'm getting a lot of buffering, folks. I'm so sorry. This happened to me on Friday too, and something's going on with my internet connection, and I don't know what to tell you. I really want you all to learn this stuff. I do apologize. I hope you're getting enough of this for it to register and for it to be helpful. All right, so you can see what we're doing there though, right? All right, now what I can do is I can merge those two layers together, Command E, select those two layers and merge them together. And now that I have them together, I can go ahead and I can reshape and reform and, and um, just sort of carve this into exactly the shape I want it to be while retaining some of that texture. Very, very helpful. I can come in here and do the same thing. And because I started with that nice soft color and edge quality, right? <clears throat> Using that watercolor brush, it makes it really nice to have that transition from the scalp into the hair. See that? That works so well. And there we have some nice textured hair and I can always come back and use the same brush to just kind of add a bit of hair wherever I want. All right. So that is a really, really helpful thing. Now, you're talking about lighting earlier, right? So if you want, you can go ahead and grab this lighter color. And if you want to go ahead and hit an area up here where there's more light, okay? If it's a top light situation, you can use that same brush 
to do that, to add a bit of a highlight there at the top, okay? And then you can come back in with that darker color. You can go back and forth and back and forth and just get exactly what you want um, with, that, with that blockhead brush and get some nice effects there. All right, so what are some other options though? What are some other options? Well, let's take a look. This is where we wanna have some fun. So if we are talking about more textured hair, what's really cool is being able to use things like halftone brushes. So you notice we have this halftone here. This is the daisy chain, and that's in that same brush set, that 2019 um, update for spring right there, spring 2019. So being able to use any of these interesting brushes or something like uh, the Predator, for example, look at that. If you think about experimenting more with brushes to add texture to hair, you can still get great results. My lasso tool and create a boundary for an area that I want to add uh, some hair inside of, okay. I can do that and then use a brush like the Predator, for example, and go a little lighter there. And then as I come up here, get a little darker, and then deselect, and you can do stuff like that. And you can see that's quite effective and for certain styles of illustration, for comics or other kinds of editorial or book illustration, that could work really nicely, right? And a moment ago, we were looking at um, this daisy chain brush here. You can go ahead, remember with all of these brushes that have any kind of a texture associated with them, open up the texture panel right here in your brush settings and play with the scale. So look at this, I can increase that scale to say 50%. And then I can go ahead and do this using light pressure just to give myself a base. And then again, moving away from the scalp a little bit Go a little heavier, a little darker, okay? Like so. It's fun to be able to do this. It's fun to be able to use brushes to experiment and still give across an idea of the texture of something or the look of something without being so literal. And I want you to think about that. That's a really good thing to practice and to start playing with using these different brushes. All right, now, what do you do though for someone who has maybe more like braids and features like that? Well, let's take a look at some of those ideas, okay? So, we'll close this up. And we're gonna come back to our mega pack now, all right? And we're gonna open up the effects box. And where are you? There we go. We got some interesting brushes in here to play with. Um, I think noise control might be might be a fun one. Actually, this is just a good one to demonstrate again for, I know I keep coming back to the same method, but it's just so good to point these out because there are so many brushes and I think a lot of the times you might not find them if I don't show them to you. Uh, this noise control brush just gives you like instant short textured hair. It's perfect. Um, worth looking into that one. What we're looking at now is uh, braids and I did actually create a brush that's coming out in the fall 2022 brush set here called Braid 1. And I'll just show you how this braided brush looks. Look at that. So for short uh, braids, this brush is really, really great. You can see how I can do these nice separated braids like this. And just kind of design them in a pattern growing and being braided back across the head, right? 
you can just sort of tap on the screen here and there to get your silhouette exactly the way you want it. There you go. Now, how would you go about making a brush like this? I think a lot of the times people want to know, well, I want to make something like that. Well, a good thing to do is to deconstruct these brushes and you'll understand then how to really go about customizing this for yourself and for your own needs, okay? So we'll open up our brush settings here and we'll take a look at this. Now I'm gonna turn off scattering, texture, dual brush, color dynamics, all the fancy business and shape dynamics. And what you should see now on the screen is the actual brush stamp, which I'll just tap for you to look at. So what I'm thinking about here is creating a stamp that has no symmetry to it. And the key is that I want this stamp, okay, to be able to, if I were to paint, for example, in a vertical direction, I want it to be able to repeat itself like this, right? But I also want it to be able to flip horizontally and flip vertically with each successive stamp. And that's the key to getting something like what you see here, okay? So how does that work? Well, we turn our shape dynamics back on for this brush. I want you to look here and see this flip Y jitter. This is telling me along the Y axis, I'm gonna have it flip. You'll notice I also have a size jitter for 20%. That means percent either smaller or larger than whatever the brush size is I've selected. There's also a roundness jitter. This is an underappreciated quality of the Photoshop brush settings. It takes your stamp and it does, uh, it does this to it. If this is my original stamp, the roundness jitter allows you to squish it from the top to the bottom randomly. So you're actually deforming the stamp. So as I'm drawing, if it's squishing a little bit here and there, that's also gonna help so that it doesn't look too repetitive, but still has the same basic kind of form. All right, and that, that visual vocab remains the same, right? So we'll turn things back on now. And this is what I get. Okay, now I've got things like a little texture in there. Um, I've got some scattering, very little, just 14%, so it's moving off of the axis of the, uh, the, the rather the path, excuse me, that I'm drawing with my, with my stylus. And that allows me to do this. All right, so why don't we take a look at another um, idea. Using this same brush, I can do things like like this, I can just go ahead and draw braids, right? And the key here, like everything else, is thinking about, well, how would these grow in which direction from where, okay? Where would they be tied off, right, etc. Thinking about that kind of stuff, if you want to create a good design for the hair, right? This is one of those things where your design sense and the decisions you make come into play. So the result is not too repetitive and it's interesting. See that? But look how much time you save by using a custom brush like this to create a head of hair in this way. Now, if you've done this on a separate layer like I have, you can always lock your layer transparency and you can go in and you can fill it with a different color. I did that by filling with the foreground color, option delete, right? And uh, then what I can do is I can get a little bit more subtle so I can go a little darker in some bits, right, and start to make it look just a bit more
interesting with adding some sort of shadows and things like that here and there. Right? But you get the idea, right? Underneath it, on a separate layer, I can even do this. I can add a darker color so that some of those braids get the impression they're like sort of sitting on a um, a sort of base, if you will. See that? Okay. There's another trick for you. Uh, this is all just done with this one brush. Just one brush. All right, now what about short hair? We did that sort of long flowing hair earlier, okay? But I wanna, I wanna come back in to the uh, Mega Pack, here you are. Bristle brushes here. And you're gonna see that one of them says bristle, hair, and grass. Now if you look at this, you can see how that could do some nice short hair for you right there, okay? So with a brush like this, you can make it a little bigger. And again, like I said before, I recommend doing things like this, like giving yourself uh, some kind of a, a base. Okay, we only have an hour, so I try and get as much done as I can for you. All right, but I'm gonna get you a little base in there. Okay. I can soften this with this brush. There we go. And from the base, I just extend a little bit like this using this brush. And what this does, as before, is it gives me a method to then come in and do a bit of work on um, darks and lights, you know, give a sense of uh, volume to it, okay? So there you go, now you've got yourself a little base. And um, just like we did with um, that longer hair, okay, I can lock my layer transparency, go for a darker color, and then here where there's a sort of a part there while it's turning away from the light a little bit. Under that little okay, to do this. Okay. And then we want to go a little lighter. Remember this technique from a moment ago with the longer hair at the top of the show there. Okay, and now we can use 
bring some of these little passages here under control a bit more. Soften it up. Because again, you don't want to have like so many little strands that it starts to feel distracting. Okay. You can always come in here for the strength of your smudge tool. You can knock that uh, back. Like I can put in 60%, for example. It's currently at 99. By doing this, I can't pull and smudge as much. Okay, it's gonna be a lot more subtle. And so for short hair like this, that might be what I wanna do. I can just kinda of go back and forth and back and forth and just soften this up a little bit. Okay. Turn off my lock layer transparency and I can soften some of these edges too because as we talked about a moment ago, hair is soft, right? So there we go. And now you come back with the brush, go back in here and there. The key is not to overdo it. You have to find a balance between the softer stuff and the crisper stuff, if you will. And that all just comes down to your personal taste and your personal style and everything. But um, I will what that right combo is, like where you need to pull back and where you need to um, go for it a bit more. So you can see how that starts to come together as well. Hair and grass brush, and that is um, in the Mega Pack. Handy little brush for this kind of thing. You could use other brushes for it as well, of course. Um, you're not limited by in there, okay? All right. Now, what about like curly hair? What do you do with the curly hair, folks? What do you do? Now you have lots of options for that, okay? Now remember, your smudge tool can be a very good friend, and that's what I'm gonna show you just as one sort of method. So we're gonna grab a chunky brush to do this. Um, where are you? Creamy variation, here you go. We're gonna use the creamy brush for this, we like a base color here. We're just gonna add some, some hair here. You see what this brush is good for is just chunky chunks, hence the name, right? No mystery there, no mystery there. All right, got my chunks. Go a little darker, do some darker chunks in there. Dark trunk, dark chunk. Try and design something kind of interesting there. Okay, and then a little darker. Chunkity, chunkity, chunk, chunk, chunk. Okay, now once I've done this, I can grab that uh, smudge tool and just start playing with pulling all this stuff together. So we go to the smudge tool and we increase the strength again. I'm gonna go back up to like 99 like it was. And now I can just start doing stuff like this. See that? There are enough sort of areas that sort of feel like they could be like highlights, okay? 
and enough areas that feel like um, just sort of an area of shadow there. I'm thinking about moving these wavy bits, these curls, if you will, into interesting designs, right? The pattern I want to create, I want it to be interesting. There's a vocabulary there that I want to be consistent, okay? But you can see how this can come together. Very efficient, very quick way to get some really cool curly, wavy hair. It's something you might not have thought about, and I'd love for you to try. So folks, I hope the buffering wasn't too bad. I hope you got something out of this brush hour. And um, um, have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind, and I will say ciao for now.